Hey guys, this is Mr. Sal. So um, I'm doing this video. Uh, it's kind of an older problem, but uh, I thought it'd be worth doing right here. So here we go. And, and the idea on this one is to just simplify this really ugly looking thing. And we want to make sure that we have only positive exponents. There are several different ways to do this problem, but uh, I'm just going to be able to show you one way right here. So I, I really hope it helps. Uh, if so, let me know in the comments. And if not, please let me know uh, maybe a way that you do it and we can show maybe a more effective way if you feel like this is not effective for you. So we can call this method one. So I should specify on this that I'm looking at this in three different parts. I've got the numerator here and this denominator and then I have this whole expression raised to the power of two. So what I'm going to do is simplify each of these to start out with. So I'm going to look here at this red set of parentheses, just the numerator part. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show the exponent of the 6, which is 1. Then I'm going to distribute the negative 1 into the parentheses. And this distribution is with exponents, so I'm just multiplying it by the exponents. So that gives me 6 to the power of 1 times negative 1, a to the power of 3 times negative 1, and b to the power of negative 2 times negative 1. So that leaves me with this, and notice the b exponent 2 changed from a negative to a positive right here, so we have b to the power of 2. So right now I have that pretty well simplified. I don't have positive exponents, and I'm not going to worry about that just yet, because what I want to do now is focus on the denominator portion here. And again, I'm looking at 2 with a power of 1. And I'll be distributing, oh, and we got a b there with the power of 1, 2 as well. So I'm going to be distributing this negative 2 into these three exponents. All right, so that's what I have now. And I'm just going to be multiplying these exponents. Again, uh, you, some of you may not have needed that entire segment right there. And so that's fine if you do it that way. Just uh, This is just showing all the work right here. So now I've got to multiply the exponents. And that's pretty well simplified right there. Again, I'm not so worried about the negative exponents just yet. So what I'm going to do now is look at the set of parentheses here. And we'll look at that in green. And yes, we're going to be multiplying it to these two fractions. And I just want to identify, just once again, any exponents that we can't see are 1. So it's 3 to the power of 1, a to the power of 1, and 2 to the power of 1. And as it turns out, with this fraction the way it is, the 2 distributes to all of the exponents, whether they're in the numerator or denominator. So I'm just using the same technique to show this. Now, yes, we could have simplified everything on the inside of that set of parentheses, but it's not necessarily that we do that to start out with. So that shows we had all of the original exponents for each of the bases, and now we've multiplied those exponents by 2. And now we have this new problem, which has now been simplified just a little bit for us. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change all of the negative exponents to positives. We only need to do this with the negative exponents. For example, 6 to the power of negative 1, 2 to the power of negative 2, and then we have these other two as well. So to change these into positives, all I'm going to do is move them either from the bottom or the top to the bottom or the top or the bottom, okay? So, for example, let's, let's just look at this, okay? So I've got this 6 to the power of negative 1. I want that to have a positive exponent, so it's in the numerator or the top. I'm going to move it to the denominator. Now it has a positive exponent, okay? So a negative exponent is just telling us to take the reciprocal of that number, and to reciprocate that, all I've got to do is move it to the opposite part of the fraction, so it's the same way with this 2 to the power of negative 2. I could move that so that it's up here 2 to the power of 2. Same with the b. I could move that up here as well. So now it's b to the power of 2. And then I've got this b to the power of negative 6. And yes, this is multiplication between. So now I've got b to the power of 6. So the only thing I need to do now is... Oh, I, I apologize. I almost missed one right there. I've got that a cubed, which is going to move, again, to the denominator. So just looking this over, it looks like I've got all of the negative exponents moved, which changes them to positive exponents. 
Next, I'm just going to rewrite everything else that has stayed where it was. All right, and this is what I have right here. Now, we could use some rules of exponents, but uh, the first thing I'm going to do is make this one big fraction. And the reason I can do that is because it's simply fraction multiplication. So I can multiply the numerators and denominators together, and I get the same thing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the commutative property to move all of the like parts of this next to each other. So what does that mean? Well, that means that I want to take that 2 squared, and I want it closer in the, in the numerator to the 3 squared. See that? So I just move this 3 squared over here, right? See, and then I can look at the bases alphabetically. So I've got that a squared right here. And then I've got four b parts to this, right? We have the squared, this squared, to the power of 6, and also to the power of 6 as well. So that's my new numerator. Uh, now, that may or may not look better to you, but uh, this may help us to see and visualize what properties of exponents we actually will be using. And I'm going to do the same thing to the denominator, which only has a's, and that makes that actually pretty nice. All right, so this is where we're at now having changed everything in the denominator so that we have more like terms next to each other in this multiplication problem. Now there's one thing we can do on this and whether it's done now or later it really does not matter but we may notice that we got that 2 squared in the numerator and we also have the 2 squared in the denominator so those should cancel each other out right there. And from here, let's just, um, well, let's go ahead and make that 3 squared a 9. And in addition to that, let's go ahead and change that 6 to the power of 1. Uh, we'll just get rid of that power of 1 right there. It's not really necessary that it be there. All right, so now we're just looking at exponential rules. So let's simplify the numerator and denominator separately first. So just looking at the numerator, I've got those b's, those same bases, b. And since they're all being multiplied together right here, we can add all the exponents together. And I'll play, apply the same rule to the denominator as well. So now what I have is 9a to the power of 2, b to the power of 16, all over 6 times uh, a to the power of 11. So applying more rules to this right here, um, Two of the a's right here, these two a's, are going to cancel out 2 from the 11. So we're going to take, take away two of those 11 a's from the denominator. So that one give us a to the power of 9 right here. And we can also simplify the 6 and the 9. We can simplify those to 3 and 2. So now I've got a 2a to the 9th. And in my denom uh, numerator, rather, I've got 3. And then I've got b to the power of 16. And that would be as far as we can simplify this thing. Of course, again, at the beginning, you may have done this slightly different than the way that I did it. But in any case, you should come out with that same answer that I have right there. So thanks for watching. I know this was a little extended, so hopefully if you guys needed to, you just kind of fast-forwarded through the parts that you didn't need because I did show some extra steps on this. So thanks for watching, and we will see you guys next time.